Welcome to the Oviedo City Council meeting. It's uh, Tuesday, January 17th. We only say that once a year around here. Uh, if everybody could please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chief White, can, oh, here you come. Lead us on our invocation, please. Good evening, Council. How are you, Chief? Very good, thank you. If you'd like to join me in a word of prayer, please do so at this time. Father God, our, our hearts and minds are on the... Uh, families and friends and co-workers of the Orange County Deputy Sheriff and the Orlando police officer who lost their life recently. Lord, we just pray for healing and for comfort. We pray, Lord, that there is a peaceful and quick resolution to this situation and no one else would get hurt. Lord, we pray for our nation with the President-elect taking, taking board here very soon and pray for our, our veterans and all of our military and active service, that you would keep them safe and bless and comfort their families. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, Chief. This time I'd like to call our meeting to order. It is, again, as I said, Tuesday, January 17th. It's about 6.32 p.m. Uh, we have no ceremonial items uh, this evening, so our first order of business is the approval of the minutes for December 5th, 2016. I'd like to entertain a motion to do so. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? No, sir. No. None? Uh, hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is our public comment portion of the meeting. This is for... Uh, the public to come up and address the council on any item that is not already on our agenda. I have no written request. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to do so? Seeing and hearing none, I'm going to close public comment and move on to the consent agenda. This evening, the consent agenda are items 4 through 13. What is the pleasure of council? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, I, I think a few of these merit additional conversation. So what is the, I'm, I'm still learning the ropes. How do we well, suggest? Well, just hang on one second <laughs> and we will get there. Uh, I have a motion on the table to approve the consent agenda. No, no, I'll second. second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think we have the items number 4, 5, 10, and 12 merit a little bit more discussion. Uh, I think five, based on conversations with staff, may not. So I'd like confirmation that, that we're doing things in the right order. For that one in particular and the others, we could discuss. Four. So it's the Beza Well, well, uh, well instead, instead of pulling them off, uh, Council Member, can I ask a question? Do you have simple questions you can possibly ask the staff on these four items? that they may be able to satisfy your curiosity and we can move on? On all but 10, yes. All righty. Why don't you uh, ask Mr. Cobb on 4, 5, and all but 10, and then we'll um, take it from there. Okay. On item number 4, my understanding is that uh, the applicant did originally request to use well water for the irrigation and that that is permissible under Oviedo's code. Uh, my hope is that council or we can have consensus that should such a thing be found at a later date to not be practical as in this situation that we prepare applicants ahead of time to not be given potable water and to plan their landscape accordingly. You're not looking at changing within four. What you're looking for is just consensus that going forward we going can forward, So yes, yeah, so we can change, keep, so we can keep this from happening again. Everybody agree? I agree. Sure. So Staff okay. instruction on that. All righty, so four can stay on the consent for now. Five. Uh, five, as long as that is contingent on things happening later in the meeting, that seems terrific to leave on there. Mr. Cobb, is that true? Five is contingent, obviously, on things happening later on, I'm assuming. Number five is, is basically the selection of the bank. Okay. But it doesn't happen until everything else happens. It, well, yes. Okay, great. And then on 12, this is the O'Reilly Auto Parts 
uh, issue. They originally asked for 50 parking spaces of uh, impervious surface, and as part of their request to change, wanted to go to, I believe it is 48, but the code requires only 38 parking spots. So hoping to get consensus from council that uh, in the future we can encourage people to have no more paved space than is absolutely required by the code and instead allow and encourage, and I believe it's allowed now, but perhaps not as aggressively encouraged, have pervious parking spaces that are you know, maybe overflow grass parking, uh, and that is, as I understand, permissible under the current code. Does that seem okay? <laughs> Personally, I like paved spaces. You, uh, and with this, with this particular one, during the site approval, some of those spots are actually going to be on the outback side, if I remember. Or they're, they're going to be used, they're going to have shared parking. So that was the whole point with this one, is that we wanted more parking because the outback lot gets overflowed and then we have Oviedo on the park and, 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 and so forth. Um, we could pave the whole town though, so if we don't start a policy of letting people be creative with how they get these but I don't extra think it's parking spaces. Stop them from being creative right now, is there? But we could encourage them. I, I, I guess that, I'm just hoping that we can have sort of a, an attitude and a policy of we will like you a lot if you create some pervious, some pervious well, parking that, what, spaces. What, what do we hear from the rest of the council on that? I think that's more of a a vision goal setting discussion than a consent agenda item, personally. The concept is fine. Yeah, I think pervious is better than impervious, if, as long as they're not, it's not a mud field, but uh, I don't mind people being creative. Okay. And does anybody mind if staff actively suggests that people do this? I don't know that that's exactly the role of staff, but it could become the role if we were to, to suggest that they always say, let's, let's think about this. I have to be honest, I think we're a better city than encouraging dirt parking lots. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. But that's just me. See what everybody else wants. And so it wouldn't be dirt. Uh, pervious parking is a very different thing from dirt These parking. pavers are pervious. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of pervious parking space ideas. Story. I just think that we need, just need to follow our code, what it is right now. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to encourage... Uh, extra recharge areas I don't think we can make them make them do it until we decide to change the code and that might be a you know a discussion for down the road but you know I don't have a problem with suggesting it but I think we have to make them follow the code we can't we can't make up the rules as we go along but you know it's not a bad idea so you want to do it as a code change perhaps though? would have to be a code change because I mean that's what we've had we've been cleaning up our code so much you know what we just approved uh, um, what Teresa and her staff did with that 69-page report, we now have clear standards on what townhomes and multifamilies and things like we that look. Yet. We have Well, I'm just saying that 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 that's what we want. We can't make the rules well that says you can have the you know the paved parking and now, but somebody wants you to. We got to have it in the code. So maybe well, maybe uh, work towards putting the it in the code. Uh, yes, they did do that, huh? and there, there's a lot of flexibility in there. I think. People just may not, it may not occur to them to try it. Right, but then my email box filled up with why are we allowing dirt parking lots. Yeah. I, I'm just saying. Okay. We just need to, it's, it's not a bad idea, but we just need to make sure it's in our code and everybody knows what to follow. That's what we've been working towards all these years is to just give people a set of rules to follow so they don't have to come to us all the time and to, and to, to Brian and, and say, you know, we, can, we can't it, make it up as we go on. But it, it's not a bad idea. Is it our public works parking lot pervious, Bobby? <clears throat> yeah, something like that. It's not dirt. I know that. Okay. Well, Bob, what do you think? Do you want to just make a part of code changes? We can discuss it at code changes. I, I, I want. I, I like finished parking lots. So if the finished parking lot, whether it's whether it's pavers or you know the it's, you know it's okay if they're you know impervious, but or pervious, but the uh, but I don't like the look of rock or grass. I think that that just looks incomplete. Um, so, you know, so as long as it's finished, I, I would be okay with that. Sounds like we'll talk about this at Coach. All so right, sounds good. Perfect. Now, 10 you want to pull off? 10, I think, is probably a okay. little more in-depth discussion. Okay. Does everybody agree? Motioner and seconder? Pull That's 10. fine. All righty, so we're going to make 10 uh, 
thirteen A will be ten. All right. So the motion on the table is to adopt the consent agenda, except for item ten, which will now become thirteen A. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's let me just get down to item ten. Give me a moment here to catch up. And this is resolution number 3356-17, West Mitchell Hammock Road, 10-inch force main extension project construction. Mr. Cobb, <coughs> can you give us an introduction on this? And then I'll turn it over to Council Member Sladex, and she has the question. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request for Council to approve a work order in the amount of $330,438.79 to affordable development. Uh, for the construction of the West Mitchell Hammock 10 inch force main extension project number 17 009. Uh, currently, uh, Equinox uh, Development Properties is constructing the Vito Point development, which is located immediately east of the Wawa convenience store. Uh, they have run into an issue with connecting to the closest sewer line, which is in the State Route 426 right of way. Uh, that sewer line is not large enough for them to. Um, to serve their needs. Um, Mr. Wyatt, you can see up on the map that uh, is up on the screens, Mr. Wyatt saw an opportunity to uh, bring forward a project that is uh, called out in our master plan. And basically what it does is it runs a 10-inch line down the right of, southern right-of-way of Mitchell Hammock Road uh, from the lift station just, uh, I think it's just east of Ale House. Uh, to the Avito Point property. And what it also allows us to do is that, that you can see the other properties, one, two, three, and four there on the map. It allows us to get those properties served as well. The, um, the line that is in the county road, for, the state road 426 right of way is the line that runs to the Iron Bridge system. So in other words, the, the capital recovery charges would be split with Seminole County as well as the fees. And what this line does is that it takes all of those properties and sends them to the Avito wastewater plant is what it will do. And uh, so that was one of the things that uh, we saw as a benefit of, of installing this line and then having, having these properties connect to it. Um, and uh, so we recommend that the City Council adopt resolution number 3356-17. Council Member, we'll turn it over to you. Uh, so uh, do, does this developer have discretion to tie into the new thing that we were to add? That was already, It seems like they were already approved to tie in at one location there on Mitchell Hammock. I, is, is that correct? As far, as far as discretion, they were they were tying into the closest. So closest is the measure. Facility. Yes, they were tying in. The closest facility was that that Wawa is connected to. So are all their permits tied to that location? And all their plans are tied to that location? Or can they just switch without our permission to tie in to the other line that leads no. to Iron Bridge? So they can't switch without our permission? No, they would not be able to because when we put the line in next to their property, they'll be required to connect to that line. Okay, so we put the line in. Was there a, a Scrivener's error that would have made it impossible for them to be aware uh, unaware uh, that the line was too small to serve their needs. I'm trying to understand, uh, well, from the memo it says there is a, a, an unexplained, uh, you know, an unforeseen circumstance. I look at this and I think, well, that was foreseen. A normal person would have gone and looked prior to purchasing the property and said, well, here's the line. It's big enough or it's not big enough. I think probably the assumption was made. I, I'm speculating, but okay. I think the assumption was made that since the line was adequate to serve Wawa, that they could just tap into the Wawa service and then that would be fine for them. But then when they actually got into and started doing the calculations on it, that uh, they discovered that the line was not adequate to serve their purposes. Okay, so my, my next question is, is, is it not the burden of the person bringing new development to cover the cost of the capital improvements required to exist? One of the things that we're doing is that we're, we're actually constructing a line that's larger than what they need. So, and, and Mr. Olivia, yeah, what, what, what would be their cost? It seems like they should cost share in this in some way because they, they're the ones who need it. They're triggering the need. Ordinarily, yes. But this one was different because it started in the county, came in later. They're, 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 the way it's set up, they are doing by building permit. They didn't do as one mass on their, on their, on their impact fees. 
I didn't catch it early enough. I caught it now, and I'm trying to rectify the situation to get the line in place so the entire thing can connect, so we can reroute it ultimately to our wastewater plant. So it seems like it's getting us in the right direction, but is there any mechanism by which we can require them to contribute to its existence? I don't know how you do that in its current, the way they've got it parsed up, doing it by building permit on their parcels. They've already crossed that line. Can you help me better understand that? Ordinarily, when they come out on the, on the development, first off, we can do uh, pre-development uh, agreements with them okay. and set up so we can, get a re we can do that. Um, one way I look at it as well, though, they're already going to be paying impact fees. We'd be using those impact fees anyway. So either way, impact fees are going for the project. Okay, so they're paying big enough impact fees to... We're, uh, oh, we're still going to collect impact fees on their project. and we'll, In theory, what we're using now out of impact fees is the same. It's, you know, okay, so it's six and one half dozen of the other. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank exactly. you. Exactly. And but I have to clarify one thing on the... I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, you go right ahead. Uh, the unforeseen site condition, there was a two-inch force main that served the old Texaco gas station. What they did was it was existing. Wawa tied into it. They're fine. Survey showed it as a four-inch. Okay. So when they came in, the engineer thought it was a four-inch. So when they tie into it, they think it's four-inch, no problem. Well, then it wasn't. Okay, that, that, inch, so that, that inch, was a scrivener's error. So I'm trying to turn them around, get them to the other side. Gotcha. Which okay. Is not a, I mean, it's still a couple pieces to go after this, but this is a golden opportunity for us, and I'm trying to seize it. And is there anything that we will miss out on having to swap the order in which we are doing these capital improvements? Like what, what's, what's delayed? I, I can't remember. What, what I had planned to do originally this year was to take the master lift station and send it directly to Oviedo uh, Reclamation Facility. Okay. Water Reclamation Facility. We're going to have to design the construction. What I've delayed is the actual construction of that project. We can still do design this year. I've got enough money, but the construction will take place next year. Okay. Thank you. And, and Bobby, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, Ultimately, by putting this in, because we've been talking about this for years, it's going to enable us to get the west side of town processed in our plant, keeping all of those dollars in the city coffers as opposed to the pass-through agreement right now where we make barely a dime or a quarter per gallon that goes through. Yes, sir. This is the first project that starts that whole process. Correct. Right, so then you get it to the lift station. The lift station is still going to Ironbridge until we connect the lift station to the sewer plant. And, and then week. at that point in time, then we'll be able to probably turn around the hospital, the maybe the mall. Well, the mall's tied in all different. The entire 426 corridor. Correct. So mm -hmm. then really what the next step needs to be is we have to make mandatory hookups to get people into that 426 line. That's kind that was a major, that's major faux pas. 12 years ago when we put that line in the ground, but we didn't require hookups. Definitely I don't think you were here for that. I think Charles Smith was here. Yeah, well. So. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I, I do have one more question, and that is, what is the approximate uh, size of the impact fees that are going to go towards the sewer improvement system? That, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look in the numbers. One thing that is, is when you look at this side of the corridor in our, our, our service area, you've got the split. You've got the, the, the city's uh, impact fees and you've got the county impact fees. So really, we only get about half. It's not significant. So in a way, I still wouldn't collect a whole lot of impact fees. We still would have to use what's in reserve. And, and there's no way under state statute to fix that scenario? We still okay. would have a contribution regardless. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cobb, I think it will be helpful at a later date, not tonight, to get council member up to speed on why that project is being developed in the county and then brought into the city. Yes. Uh, I, I think she needs to understand that, and then, right. then this will all make sense. Sure. Okay. Uh, and, and I can tell you that the, the impact fees, uh, the, the capital recovery charges for water and sewer, that, like we call them, and then the regular impact fees, is going to be based on the uses that are in there. Uh, and it's also going to be like if it's a restaurant, it's going to be based on the number of seats. Uh, the retail and offices, it will obviously be based on the square footage. And so once we get a handle of what those uses are and the square footages or in the case of the restaurant, the number of seats, then we'll be able to give a, we can give you a, a, a pretty good estimate of what the, you know, the impact fees are going to be. Sure. Council Member, for the long-term benefit of the tax base, the council had to make some choices on allowing them to develop in the county. They were originally going to develop in the county, hook up to all the county lines. And stay there. We would have had all the impact with none of the benefit. Yes. So, Ms. Mr. Cop can go through yeah. why it happened. All right. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. No. All righty. So, Bobby, thank you. Just need a motion. 
Mr. Mayor, uh -huh. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 3356-17. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? No, sir. It's good. Keith, you're good? Good. Bob? Good. Megan, you're good? I'm good. Right. Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion to adopt 3556-17, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let me catch up here to number 14. We're up to ordinance number 1639. One moment, let me get here. Mr. Crew, can you read that ordinance by title only for us, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An order for the City of Oviedo, Florida, amending the competency plan of the City of Oviedo, deleting the references to the City of Oviedo, Seminole County Joint Planning Area, and transition areas in all elements of the competency plan. Providing for implementing administrative actions, providing for a savings provision, providing for conflicts, providing for codification, as well as the correction of scrivener's errors, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. That's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Grip. Mr. Cobb, please enlighten us. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for City Council to adopt amendments to the City's 2025 Conference of Plan to remove texts that are related to the City of Oviedo Seminole County Joint Planning Agreement and the corresponding Joint Planning Area. This is because that that agreement has expired and it's no longer enforceable. Uh, these amendments qualify as large-scale comprehensive plan amendments, which means that the local planning agency conducted a public hearing back in August. The City Council conducted a transmittal hearing back in September. It went to the Florida Department of uh, Economic Opportunity. They've had no objections to the proposed amendments, and tonight you will be conducting your second, and uh, which is the adoption public hearing. Uh, if the amendments are adopted, then they will become effective within 31 days of the adoption date. Uh, the, there are a number of policies that throughout the comprehensive plan that were tied to this, um, to the joint planning uh, agreement. Um, the, the revisions remove all the references to the joint planning agreement and it's recommended that the City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt Ordinance Number 1639. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. This time I'd like to open up the public hearing. I have no written requests. Is there anybody in the uh, Council Chambers who would like to address Council on Ordinance 1639? Seeing and hearing none, we're going to close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. I'd like to move that we adopt ordinance number 1639. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? No, Deputy sir. Mayor. Looks good. I have Councilman Britton. Hang on. Councilman Britton. Yeah, I just want to say I, I think this came about, about the time I came on <clears throat> council in 2006, and they had a big powwow out at the Lake Jessup, Friends of Lake Jessup meeting, and I got my tail handed to me by four Winter Springs commissioners, and I think my understanding is Winter Springs never signed up to this, did they? No, nope. probably not. So, I don't they, think so. so it was a big, a big show. Uh, no, we did. They did. We did, and and they did. Uh, so we've had this on our books for ten years. Um, I'm not sure it does any good anyway, because Winter Springs would do whatever they wanted anyway they were without this. Pipes yeah. and services. Yeah. And we went on it. So I, I don't think this has a, a negative impact in any way whatsoever. It's just cleaning up the books. Okay. Councilman Powell? I just have a, a question for Mr. Groot. I, uh, I was on the LPA when this was, came before the LPA. Do I need, do I need to, uh, to not vote on this side? No, sir. You're fi absolutely fine. I'm fine? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> any other questions? No. All right. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion to adopt 1639, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along, item number 15 is Ordinance 1645, Sidewalk Cafe. Mr. Green? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Avito, Florida, relating to sidewalk cafes, providing for purposes and intent, providing for definitions, providing for applications, providing for requirements, providing for regulations, providing for processes and procedures, providing for permit expiration, renewal, suspension, and revocation, providing for complaints, reporting remedies, and enforcement, providing for implementing administrative actions, providing for a savings provision, providing for conflict, severability, codification, correction of scrutiny's errors, severability, and an effective date. And that's the ordinance by Tyler, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request to adopt processes, procedures, and regulations regarding sidewalk cafes 
as an accessory use located adjacent to a principal use on a public sidewalk, a public plaza, or a public right-of-way. Uh, the areas in that uh, the sidewalk cafes will be allowed are the areas where the actual the city has a zero building setback and the buildings will be located right up adjacent to the sidewalk. Uh, the sidewalk cafe will require a permit uh, as an accessory use. Uh, they, they will be required to operate during the business hours of the principal use. Uh, the applications for the sidewalk cafe permits will be subject to the review and approval of the city council and the uh, renewal of the permits will be up under the review of the city manager provided that the, um, there are no changes to the approval of, this, of the sidewalk cafe uh, permit. The sidewalk cafes will be required to maintain a four-foot unobstructed pedestrian zone to allow for continuous pedestrian passage. Uh, the, um, if you remember from your first reading in December, there were a number of uh, revisions that were requested of the, of the uh, regulations. Those, re those revisions have been completed. Uh, Mr. Groot has reviewed them and determined that they are insignificant in nature, and so therefore a second first reading is not necessary. With that, Mayor, I will, the staff recommends that the City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt Ordinance Number 1645. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. At this time, I'd like to open up the public hearing. I have no written request. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to address council on ordinance number 1645? Hearing and seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1645. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. All right. Motion second. Uh, motion has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, you know, I think this is great. You know, sidewalk cafes become a, you know, a new uh, thing for our city. But I'm, I'm just uncomfortable with that annual permit fee. You know, if somebody is a legitimate business and came in, went through all the, you know, development services and got their permits and everything in a row. I, I just feel like it's just, it's just another, it's just another fee. Um, I don't think there's going to be that many of them, and it, you know, I think we should just. Our staff, if they ride around and they see something that's out of order, you know, they can bring it to us. But I'm just a little uncomfortable with that, that fee. Other than that, everything looks great. Okay. See what the rest of you think. Councilman Brady? I don't, uh, I don't disagree, but how do we change it at this point? Can we amend, it, amend this or amend well, the motion? Why don't we, uh, before we jump into doing that, uh, do you have anything else other no. than the fee? Okay. Councilmember Slater? I like the fee. I, I would like to see the fee be pretty high, too. Uh, if we are giving people the right to exclusively occupy publicly owned lands, uh, and, and granted, it's not to the exclusion of other people. So if I wanted to go hang out in a sidewalk cafe and purchase no food under this ordinance, I'm allowed to do that and not wear shoes while doing it. Um, so. The that, department might have something to say about that. <laughs> well, exactly. They're, they're, I think the provision is that you can't be served without shoes, but that you are allowed to be there shoeless, because at times I do roam the city with no shoes on. Um, but, yeah, if we're letting people occupy, so say they've got a 50-foot building and they protrude out 10 feet. Well, that is, what is that, 500 square feet of usable space in which they can make a profit. Um, it, it seems like there should be some sort of fee associated with that, and it's not uncommon in other cities to have a fee. Anything else? That's all. Council Member Pollock? The, <coughs> I'm okay with the, the fee. Uh, if, you know, I think it's uh, reasonable um, for the, uh, for the, per, the you know, to re-permit it. Anything else about it? Are you good with that? Yeah, I, I think it's a, a great idea. I think it's, it's something that's needed. Now, there, there is a two-part process, if I was understanding correctly from some discussions with staff. There is the initial permitting fee, which by statute or, or some kind of internal policy can only directly cover the expenses of, of uh, staff time in, in creating. And then there is a fee. It, it may be an annual renewal fee, but it's a separate thing. Can, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, the renewal fee is under the same restrictions. It can't, you can't make money in government. Uh, if you do, that's called a tax. So your your fees only can address the cost of administering a program. Then what would we call that thing to occupy 500 square feet of space and make profit in it when others are not allowed to do the same thing? We can't make a profit. We, we can't make we, 
We can't make this, this. Well, we can't make profit, but we're giving them the right to, a restaurant the right to have, you know, in the example before, 500 square feet of expanded restaurant space to accommodate more patrons and make more money. You, you still can't make a profit unless you have a program where you're leasing city property, which this is not designed that way. This is designed as a permitting program. So the, ah. So there's no, no mechanism as it's currently written to lease the land to them or create a fee big enough. Okay. That's not the, that's not the, that's not the idea. context of this ordinance. So on that, on that concept, uh, I don't see the fee being very high. The expenses yes. of uh, renewing this on an annual basis doesn't seem like it's going to be yeah. 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 You haven't said it yet, so we don't know whether it's high or low. So. Okay. But it sounds like we can only set it as high as our actual expenses are. But uh, the, the information sent to me, and I don't know how, how it works bringing that up at a public meeting, there was information sent to me, background stuff from what other cities are doing with their cafe sidewalks. And the, the fees range in intensity. Well, I don't doubt that. And uh, so they can't all accurately reflect the, the actual cost of processing the fee. So there, there ended up being two components was the explanation given to me, that one is the actual cost and one is just the fee we charge because we're giving you the right to occupy this area. You, you can calculate that way, but it has to be, the, the program has to be based upon that theory that you're allowing the use of public land, not that you're just permitting the use and you're going, going to have a program to monitor and enforce your permitting program. Does that make sense? Mainly. As long as there's discretion. If you're, if you're telling me there's discretion to have a high fee or a low fee as we see fit at a later date, that, that is a good you answer. No, I can't tell you that. You, local governments, unfortunately, do not have discretion when it comes to fees. Maybe I can help a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, Maybe I can help a little bit. Can <laughs> go, go we get back to the... Yeah. Right. Okay. Reel this back in. This is, this is getting on to a discussion down the road. It, it is, uh, City Council is going to set the fee. It's going to set the fee annually with your fee resolution. That's what you'll do. Uh, I believe that there's currently a permit fee. The initial permit fee, I think, is already in your resolution because staff was working on the ordinance, so they were proactive about it. I don't remember what the amount was. But the annual renewal is normally should be less than what the first permit fee is because obviously you're not going to spend as much time on the annual renewal, so it should be less. Um, getting back to your question, different governments have different costs. And so those governments will reflect what that cost is. Now also different governments have different philosophies on how much they want to recover of that cost. So one government may say, we don't, want, we don't really care about recovering costs, so our fee is very small. Other governments will say, you know what, we really want to recover our costs because we need to. And so their fee is more reflective of what it costs to process that application. We're sort of in the middle. That's where we are. Um, so uh, that's, you know, that's why they're different. That's why they're all over the board. It's, it's really that, that philosophical question more than anything. But they all, have, they all have to abide by the guidelines that Mr. Groot established that you can't exceed what, you know, what, you're, what it's costing you to, to process that. So process that way, well, your discretion is to go lower than it costs you, not to go higher than it costs you. Okay. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Can I ask one question? Sure. Um, this, this would also have the, uh, our annual uh, pet-friendly fee attached to it also, wouldn't it? Would that apply to... Okay. If they were to allow pets, yes. Okay. Yes. So we, got, we, we, we don't charge that pet, that pet fee. Isn't that the... They have to get the small permit from us, and then it's the health department. It's mainly the health department, but yeah, we have the small permit. Oh, we don't have a fee for that? No, we should no, it's, 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 it's minor. <laughs> okay. Well, the health department <laughs> it is it requires us to issue a, a permit. Okay. Remember, that was the whole thing with that yeah. Dixie doggy dining or whatever the ordinance was called? Yeah. And we have to issue a permit, and then they take that, which um, I guess tells the health department that this municipality allows it, Correct. and then they pay the health department whatever their fee is. But, uh, uh, you know, as far as Sidewalk Cafe, I mean, I, I, I looked through the changes, and uh, I, I, I did notice that a lot of what the council members brought up, and specifically Council Member Sladek brought up a few things, uh, seemed to be incorporated in it. Uh, I was, you know, 
concerned about the fee, but after sitting with staff and understanding why the fee is there, um, you know, I, I can live with it at this point in time. Uh, you know, this is this is really lifestyle. I mean, you know, folks today, I mean, they want to go out to a restaurant. The uh, sidewalk dining is very popular. Go up and down Park Avenue, go about just anywhere, uh, and that's not something that we have in our code, not, not because we were discouraging it, but because we didn't have the type of building that Oviedo on the Park is going to be where the buildings are right on the sidewalk. So, um, you know, I, I, I really like that uh, Oviedo is bringing their codes up to date, uh, you know, with our, with our staff, Dr. Korea, you and your staff are doing a great job, uh, as uh, Deputy Mayor Henkin likes to say all the time, modernizing our code. And, and bringing it up to date. So, so we have these types of quality of life issues that, that folks enjoy. I mean, they, they like that. Uh, so the, the way it's written, I'm fine with it. As far as what the fee is, um, you know, the application was in here. The fee will be in the fee schedule. We'll debate that at another time if we feel it's too high. But, you know, as long as staff is consistent, and, I, and that, that, if I, I'm not trying to put words in council members' mouth, but uh, I, I think that's what you were getting towards, is that you know, as long as everything's consistent with what we do, I, that's what we'd want to be looking for, not being arbitrary on fees. So uh, that would be my concern sometimes when I look at the fee schedule and, you know, we have one that just jumps. You know, it's like, okay, why? Um, so that, that's all I have. Does anybody have anything else on this? No? All right. Okay. Motion? I'm sorry? I'll just... Uh, so there, there's no uh, motion to change? Uh, doesn't seem like we have that right now. Okay. Well, you're going to need a motion to change because I'm not going to vote for the fee. So um, <laughs> I voted to approve without the fee. So I guess oh, yeah. I have to make a motion to take out the fee, which I think four are going to deny and someone's going to have to make a motion to reapprove. Well, <laughs> no. Uh, you can... You can amend your motion to... The motion was to approve with the fee. Yeah, the motion is to approve with the fee. Okay, you can, well, well, I'm going to make it. All right, I, I hear you. You can amend your motion and see if you get a second. Well, I'm going to amend it anyway because I, you know, just in closing, yeah, it's not a big deal. You, but you, I you, just, you can't amend your motion. The motion's made in second. No, I'm just still in my discussion. Uh, well, just, I, I understand that, but I'm just explaining to you. No, I got you. I'm just saying. I just look at it this way: with business the way it is. You know, like in, in some of our programs to bring business. You know, little things like paying business tax receipts and things. Every little bit helps, and I just feel like. Sometimes it's nickel and diming on certain fees just doesn't work. That's just my opinion. But we fly with what ride. So do you? What do you want me making amend, amend? You can. You have two two options. You okay. can make no. a. You can try to amend your motion, see if you get a second, or you can remove your motion. You can withdraw it. Okay, I'll just withdraw my motion. All That's right. Easy. I need a motion to adopt ordinance sixteen forty five. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. It's kind of like sign codes. I always do this before. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't get a sign code. I agree with you, brother. <laughs> all right. Moving along, we're up to item number 16, ordinance number 1646, medical marijuana moratorium. <clears throat> Mr. Group. Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, establishing and imposing a temporary moratorium on the dispensing of medical cannabis to include but not be limited to medical marijuana treatment centers within the City of Oviedo, prohibiting any and all dispensing of medical cannabis during the moratorium period for any property located within the City of Oviedo, providing for the moratorium to extend to, to certain applications for development orders and development permits relating to real property located in the city limits of the City of Oviedo in order to allow an opportunity for the city to develop goals, objectives, and policies of the city's comprehensive plan and amendments to the city's land development code as appropriate, relating to the development of design standards and related matters pertaining to dispensing of medical cannabis as well as police power regulations, providing for legislative and administrative findings, providing for geographic area encompassed by the moratorium, providing for development which is subject to the moratorium, providing for possible extension of moratorium, providing for an administrative remedy to assert vested rights claims, providing for implementing administrative actions, providing for a savings provision, providing for non-codification as well as the correction of scrivener's errors, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. That's the onus by Tyler Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Hi, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request for the City Council to adopt a moratorium on the dispersing of 
uh, medical cannabis as well as on the location of uh, distribution centers within the city of Oviedo. Uh, the purpose of the moratorium is to allow the staff to prepare uh, appropriate uh, land development code and possibly comprehensive plan amendments uh, to govern uh, the location and the you know, to govern these uh, types of, of uh, centers. And uh, the proposed moratorium will be for 180 days. With there, there is an opportunity that at the end of the 180 days, we could go an additional 180, 180 days if necessary. Um, it's recommended that the city council uh, conduct a public hearing and schedule a second public hearing for Monday, February 6, 2017. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. At this time, I'll open up the public hearing. I have no written request. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on Ordinance 1646? Keeping in mind, this is just first reading. We'll have another bite at the apple in two weeks. Hearing none, I'll close public hearing. And I would like to entertain a motion to schedule a second public hearing on February 6, 2017 on Ordinance 1646 here at Oviedo City Hall in the Oviedo City Council Chambers, 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765, at approximately 6.30 p.m. So moved. Second. We have motion second. Any discussion from Council? Council Member, you made the motion. Anything? I like that it ends in one year at the very latest. Ends in 180 days. 180 days unless they're already at the very latest, so we can't extend past that, right. which is, is nice. So we know there's an end in sight. Seconder? Good. Good. Councilman Powell? Good. 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 Uh, Mr. Groot, just real quick, I know part of the memorandum also mentions, and, uh, you know, Ms. Mr. Cobb, I didn't hear him mention that he might have. We're still waiting for all the rules from Tallahassee, too. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, yes, sir. I mean, that, that, that seems to be the, the biggest concern of the Chiefs Association, especially. Ms. There's you want to the Chief Chuck now over there is just... Bit. Look at you got a spring in your step there. Look at that. Way to go. For those who may not know, he has a brand new knee and he's getting along pretty well. Only a few weeks ago, right? December 15th? Uh, December 13th, I have a brand new right knee. Good for you. You're looking good, Chief. Anyway, go ahead. I know you want to address this when I saw you over there. So. When, uh, is that is correct. The Under the amendment, it gives the Department of Health the Office of Compassionate Use, a certain time frame to promulgate rules. The one hang up in that is they don't have a legislative authority to do so. So the legislature has to give them authority, which won't happen until March. They only have till June, and then another deadline in September. So what this does is gives us that time frame to see what happens with the event so we can have appropriate rules so we don't run into the problem like we, uh, we did with the pill mills of having uh, places like this uh, next to schools, next to churches, next to playgrounds. Or next to Whispering Ridge, which now has zoning to be appropriate for a pharmacy in theory. And um, we were talking about mm -hmm. how... Well, you have to remember that a doctor cannot issue a prescription for medical marijuana because it's still against federal law. So a dispensary sure is not a pharmacy. Correct. <laughs> they have to issue a recommendation, and then the dispensary can dispense off the recommendation. So it's not a uh, it, it's not a prescription. And along that line, we're not sure what the federal government is going to do. It may change its policy about marijuana, it, which could change the whole ball game That's across the nation. We don't know because right now marijuana is illegal under federal law. That's why a doctor can't write a prescription. That's why a pharmacy can't dispense it. And that's why a lot of people run from it in terms of realtors and the like, because it's still illegal. And so how do you do due diligence about something that's illegal? This also and gives us an opportunity for certain safety requirements since the proceeds from selling American marijuana cannot be placed in a bank that's federally insured since it's against federal law to sell marijuana. Colorado, Colorado, they have a safe full of cash. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and they've had increased robberies, uh, increased uh, thefts, so it, it's something we need to take our time with. Brownie sales. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there's a lot more to this, and, it, and, it, and the moratoriums that cities have been passing have nothing to do with medical marijuana. I mean, medical marijuana is, 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 is something that's Sorry. necessary for certain patients. I mean, nobody wants to 
withhold that, but that isn't what this is. We don't know what this is because the state hasn't said what this is. Is this Colorado? Is it not Colorado? Is it just medical marijuana? Is it? Do you know? By, by, the, by the amendment, it's medical marijuana only. The problem comes in just like some of the pill mill doctors where you pay $150, I have an in-chrome toenail, and they may get something else to give you that, that card to allow medical marijuana. Well, and also the, the symptoms that were written into it were pretty vague. Mm -hmm. Some of them were, yes. Right, so. so this just gives us an opportunity to take a step back and kind of protect our area from hopefully some unscrupulous people that, that may want to open, like I said, close to schools, close to churches, yeah. and things that we would prefer them not to operate on there. Bye. And one of the things, too, the moratorium, since we will be preparing land development codes to address this, we can create the distinction between these distribution centers and licensed pharmacies. We can do that through definition. So that it gives us the opportunity to do that. Mm. Any other questions for the chief? Good. Thank you, chief. No, but I just got a text message, chief, and it said they got him. So that might be good news for you. That's very good news. <laughs> Thanks, chief. And they got him. Text message just became public record. But oh, can I say that loud? Uh, anyway, whatever. Um, it's anything else on scheduling the second public hearing? No. Sir. No. Motion on the table is to schedule the second public hearing on ordinance number sixteen forty six for February sixth here in the council chamber, six thirty p.m. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Moving on, we're up to item number 17, resolution number 3351-17, authorizing the issuance of utility system revenue note series 2017. Mr. Groot, can you read that by title only for us, please? Oh, no, no title. Mr. Cobb, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request for the, I'm annoyed, I'm sorry. for the City Council to authorize. Uh, no problem. This, this is a request to authorize a negotiated loan in the amount of uh, an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $5 million for the, purchase, for the purpose of financing a portion of the acquisition cost uh, associated with the Twin Rivers Golf Course property and paying the costs related to uh, issuance related and the execution and delivery of the loan agreement and the execution and delivery of the utility revenue note series 2017. Uh, the, the loan is for 15 years at a fixed rate of 2.19%. The, uh, the delivery date on the note will be January 19th. Yes, sir. 2.19 or 2.91. 2.91 okay. percent. And the uh, delivery date of the note will be January 19th, 2017. It would maturing on October 1st, 2031. The principal on the note will be paid in annual installments beginning October 1 of 2018 in each October 1 until the note is paid in full. Uh, interest payments on the note will be paid semi-annually on April 1st and October 1st commencing April 1st, 2017, and uh, carrying out until the note is paid in full. It is recommended that the City Council adopt resolution number 3351-17. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. At this time, this is a public hearing. I have no written request. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address Council on resolution 3351-17? Seeing and hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing portion and uh, move on to the pleasure of counsel. Just need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 3351-17. Second. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, I have a motion. I have a second from Councilman Britton, was it? I don't know. Did you beat me, Bob? That's fine. Councilman Britton has it. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you have the floor. Well, I think this is what we've talked about for such a long time. This is just another step. We have three of them tonight to, uh, to uh, save 300 acres in our city from development. Um, and uh, I think it's good. I'm glad we found this way to do it. So I am fully in support of it and look forward to it. Councilman Britton? Uh, pretty much ditto what uh, Councilman Hankin said. We've been working on this. Uh, several years now and this is just uh, step two into finalizing this and, and giving us a strategic opportunity either for stormwater parks or or other uh, other uses for the city rather than uh, paving it over right so we're keeping it pervious 
Pervious. There you go. All stay impervious. Uh, who would like to go first? Uh, on this, I feel again like we're doing things out of order. Um, if we are to approve the agenda item later in, in the debate, I'm not sure at what point the discussion should occur. Should it occur later or now? If we're going to have a $5 million purchase, this is a perfectly lovely way to do it. Um, but the policy question is coming after all of the choosing of the bank and the issuing of the notes, so it seems like we're, we're kind of upside down here. Council member, if I may, the, the policy question was already debated by the previous councils. That's what's led us to this. So I, 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 I agree. I, I hate to say late to the party. I'm, I feel like I'm late to the party. But, Three but of you are you, still but here. if you would like to discuss your points on, on the purchase, I would assume now would be. Wait, now is better than later? Is that? Well, check with Mr. Group, Mr. Cobb, but uh, my personal preference would be now. But let's see what they say. say to me. <laughs> Mr. Cobb, what say you? Uh, I understand what the councilwoman's concerned about is because the um, the con conversation on the stormwater revenue sufficiency study and the stormwater fee is coming up under resolutions. The good news is is that it's all approved at the same meeting. As far as where how it falls within the the council agenda is really not relevant. Um, but um, but the, it's, it's all approved at the same meeting. Then it's it's really uh, being out of order. I don't think is is is, is well, what was the material material. But well, I understand where she's concerned about it is. Well, let me ask, let me just ask a, a quick question. We could wrap it up um, by authorizing. If this was to pass, then if number twenty doesn't pass, there's no way to pay for number seventeen. So councilwoman could bring, uh, council member, excuse me, can bring up her points there or now. Doesn't really matter. Could be. Council member, it's your choice. The pleasure of the rest of council. I, I, if we're going to do it, this is a lovely way to do it. You guys mind? No, let's go ahead. All right, but you're not going to bring it up again later then? I will not bring it up again later. Okay. All right. um, and, and One bite at the apple. One bite at the apple. Uh, my concern is just uh, the common sense look at this. Uh, what exactly will we have after we purchase it for our stormwater system that we don't have right now? And I've asked a lot of people the same question. I uh, met with David Mankin from the Seminole Soil and Water Conservation District on Friday, along with some city staff members. Um, there are a lot of things that it brings to the city, but none of those things seem to directly benefit our stormwater system. So my concern here is paying for it in this way. At the end of the day, I think this is the right outcome. Um, and this is cheap money, and if we don't do it now, we forego the cheap money. But um, I, I'm just concerned about the transparency level of this. Uh, we are also maxing out the uh, $5 million that we're allowed to spend and adding another 465000 to it, which under the charter we're really not allowed to do. So we're, we're, we've shuffled some money and combined it together in a way that is really pushing the limits of what I think this body's authority is without the taxpayers being fully informed about what it is that we're, we're looking to do. Then what's the end of the meeting? I mean, it, 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 well, not, well, not, not, not having the benefit of the four years that we've been involved in this, not having the benefit of the threat of development, not having the benefit of a secondary plan that they can do without us basically without uh, anything that, uh, or I shouldn't say anything, but uh, making it, what was the term, less defensible um, with their, their plan B, um, you know, the staff and the council had to get creative. creative. That, the creativity is, is and, what and, I'm concerned about. And, and, that's, and that's fine. I mean, it's, it's just that you don't get a lot of opportunities to preserve 300 acres in the center of your city. You also, when we're done, we will be a city of 37, 38,000 with over 750 acres preserved. When we bought uh, Winter Miles Park, now known as Shane Kelly Park, way back in the day, that was a $2 million purchase <coughs> done with general funds that we turned into grant money later on, which could happen here once we own it, it's easier to do that, uh, for 100 acres. I mean, so 
you know, when you, when you, when you look at what you're, you're getting here and what we got then, yes. You know, can, can, you, can you make the, the, the argument that we're getting creative? Can you make the argument that uh, you may not be comfortable with the creativity, but the, the fact is, this is the, the end. I mean, we don't have anywhere else to go. And if um, the decision of this body is not to move forward, then unfortunately what the fear is is that you'll have a development proposal in front of you and we'll be in the courts and because uh, it's just what's going to happen. And has any development actually been proposed or has it just been threatened as have lawsuits been threatened? No, they, they have a plan. They I understood that they applied and then they withdrew the application <clears throat> and went through a lot of shenanigans. Only because of arm ringing from council members. They withdrew. Because we wanted to get to a point where we could possibly purchase or partner with others. Mr. Mayor. Uh, others have not come through. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted you know, I just want to say um, that you know, this decision was such a hard a hard decision and, and the creativity, yes, it was very creative, but I mean I just look at it this way. Five million dollars that the council's allowed to purchase, you know, you know, to use for purchasing of these type of things. Think about what happens if we don't do it. All of a sudden, we have right in the middle of our city a traffic nightmare that's out of control. To address that, it's going to cost us a couple million to fix it. To have something that's been in our city forever um, that people like, even if they don't play golf driving by. Uh, Twin Rivers is a beautiful part of the city. I mean, there really is no answer for this. Anybody sitting up here, I think, would come to the same conclusion. We've wrestled with this for so many, so many years. And I think the stormwater issue, obviously, that is going to take us a couple years to get the infrastructure to send stormwater over to the golf course. Then, then it becomes we're not dependent on a it's private. It's not stormwater. If I could interrupt for just a second, that's the problem. We're not sending stormwater over there. Reclaimed We're, water. It's a different. It's a different. But, here, but, here, but if I finish my point, my point is, is that we have these perk ponds behind us that's owned by a private person that we're paying a lot of money for each year that eventually will go away because we have our own place to do it. So you have to look at, you have to look at the big picture. But the answer, if, if we said no to this, your email box will blow up like you would not believe because, and, and I, I honestly think, for lack of a better word, if we didn't do this, we'd ruin our city. I really do. I think it would completely change what's happening. All the other big development we have, like Oviedo on the Park, that was voter approved, and we're addressing that, you know, and all these things that are happening. So I just think, it, this, it, you know, I hear your concerns, but this is a this is a big decision for the city's future. I think so. Anybody have anything else? Well, we we vetted this, uh, Mr. Groot. Are are we under any kind of uh, legal liability if we approve this? I I thought we've gone through all these legal uh, maneuvers and uh, and questions earlier. This has been vetted by bond counsel, by the financial advisor, by the finance director, by the city manager, by our office in terms of the city charter and state law. Uh, obviously, you don't have to do it, but it's, it's vetted and is ready to be signed off by all respects. Okay, so it's not perfect. Nothing, nothing really is. The world isn't perfect, but it's a way to, to finalize and, and get closure on this. And then we've got a strategic opportunity to, to do with it what we want, what we want in the future, and that's that'll be for the next generation to decide or the next council to decide, because that that's a little bit down the road. Anything else? No. Councilman Pollock, you've been quiet. My, I don't have an issue with this in particular. The only issue I had with the no, what, and I, I, um, I, you know expressed my concerns was the uh, early payment um, fee that was attached to it. So if we issue this note and for some reason the the deal falls through that we're um, that you know that we're we're going to use it for um, there will be an early payment fee um, to, to, to repay it back. Um, so uh, you know I, I leave this on uh, on the city to make sure that you know the the rest of the deal gets finished after this. 
If I only get one bite of the apple, can I get it all out of my system now? <laughs> Go ahead. You've got five minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Uh, my, my other concern with this is that we don't know what it's going to cost afterwards. So we get, a, we, we, what we're buying is a golf course. We're not buying it for stormwater. So we should just dispel the myth now. We are buying the golf course we're with the intent. Parkland. We're buying parkland with the intent to, to attempt to keep it a golf course for an indeterminate amount of time. Well, I have to stop you there because we, it, it is part of, of, of the reclaimed and not paying somebody. Reclaimed, to, yes, not stormwater. It's a, different, it's a different enterprise fund. But the yes, so do, part of getting this out of my system is we are obligated to pay about three hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and that number will go up as taxes increase on about sixty acres of land behind City Hall. That is where these park ponds that you keep hearing us talk about are located. So reclaimed water, when there's extra water because it's raining, it goes and it, it's parked behind City Hall. The idea is to uh, move all of this water down to Twin Rivers Golf Cart Course and park it there instead because our land lease with the owners ends in 20, 2034. In the meantime, there is no escape clause to paying about $320,000 per year to continue parking the water there. Uh, so. At the end of the day, in 17 years, we do need land, absolutely, and for the short term, it is a feather in our cap to have a golf course, but what we need it for is not stormwater, because I, I pulled up all of the FEMA maps, all of the different flood zone maps. Most of that land, you can't build on it uh, as it is, but you can build on the actual golf course, which is, I guess, the Plan B surprise attack. Right, but let me ask a question, and I don't mean to interrupt, because you just brought up a point. Our stormwater capacity, our flood zone capacity, everything else changes if it gets developed. But that's something that I haven't been able to get answered by staff. So the, the critical question here is, when the PUD was originally approved, was the assumption that that would be built to that capacity already taken into account, and are they expecting the existing ponds to accommodate that water, or would the law be applied, as I understand for all other projects, that if you are to build, you must retain 100% of any displaced water on the site where you build. If that is the case, then building and creating more impervious surface doesn't change the amount of flooding that will happen in that area, other than what's already happening. Mr. Groot, do you have an answer to that? I, I guess that's an engineering point. That's what I just, I just said. Mr. Wyatt might want to yeah. jump in. <clears throat> Matter of fact, okay, just uh, while Bobby's Bobby, coming up. Bobby, hang on a second. Let Brian see if he can. Well, well, Bobby, actually, no, Bobby, go ahead and come on up. Um, the benefit to the stormwater program is that it preserves what we already have. If and one of the things that we've talked a lot about with staff is that, yes, this golf course is at the confluence of the two rivers. And having flown over those rivers in 2004 and saw how the, the two rivers flooded their banks and saw how this golf course aided in protecting those homes, it, 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 it's really about preserving what we already have. It's, it's about maintaining our community rating system score of six rather than having it drop to an eight or a nine. It's about that. Uh, it's, it's about being able to preserve those lands that the, the original PUD was done in the early 80s. Those ponds were, I'm not really sure how those <laughs> things were done because it was in the early 80s before we even had growth management. Um, but. And, and I'll let Bobby address the engineering, but yes, if a development were to come in, they would have to comply with the city's regulations and they would have to address their stormwater, and even to the detail of how much water they'll be needing and how, much, how fast that water is going to be flowing and based on how they change the elevations of the land. And they would have to go through all of that review. But the idea behind this is that it's, it's more about preserving what we have rather than trying to contribute something new to it. And so we saw a justification with the stormwater, with the stormwater program because we would preserve, be preserving what we do have by being able to maintain the course as the open space that it was called for in the PUD. Um, I'll let Mr. Wyatt address the engineering side of, of that as well. The engineering side of it is simple to me. The as council's familiar, um, 
the city has a community rating system score of six. That provides all of our residents a minimum of a 5% discount on flood insurance. Those in a special flood hazard area get a 10% discount. One of the major benefits we get from golf course is open space, and that counts towards our CRS ranking. If that goes away, then that discount goes away. The one thing that I have, I have learned in talking with one of our consultants is FEMA likes these kind of purchases. Most of that golf course is a special flood hazard area. When that river floods, that's where it goes. So if you have development on those lands, potentially you're going to block that water. It's going to go somewhere else. Path of least resistance. That's where water goes. That's what it does. So to me, we're going to preserve that CRS rating. We're going to preserve the open space. To me, that's a big deal. And there is, a, there is another benefit with reclaim down the road, yes. So what, what did we talk about earlier? Sioux City, Iowa? Was that the uh, city that got flooded in the 60s and the whole neighborhoods got washed away in the result of it is they purchased those neighborhoods and they're all golf courses now. I think there's six, six uh, golf courses along the river in Sioux City for the, exactly the purpose you're talking about. Any other questions for Mr. White? Not for him, but I didn't get to my whole five minutes. And I, I just want to get a few more concerns out there uh, with regards to how are we going to fund it as a golf course? Where is all this extra money coming from? So we've already got the five million. We've got four sixty-five. Uh, have we determined the amount that will be set aside through the interagency loans to maintain it for the short term? Because we've we've already set aside funds to cover the first interest payment. It, it, the only thing we're talking about tonight is purchase of the golf course. The use of the golf course will come later on. I, I know, but I, to to buy it before we have a plan for what we're going to do with it. Council member. We don't have time. All righty? If, if you want to vote against this, please vote against it and spend more time with staff and get up to speed. If you would like this council to deny this based on your discussions after four years of us being through this, go to the owners and tell them after all of this, this is what we're going to do. They're going to be in front of you with a plan to develop the golf course. Then you're going to have your council chambers packed with thousands of residents. Then we're going to do one of two things. We're going to approve it or we're going to deny it. More than likely we'll deny it because that's what the public pressure will tell us to do. Then we'll end up in court. We'll go to circuit court first. I don't, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. We'll win or lose. We'll appeal. They'll appeal. An HOA will sue us. And all of these few dollars that you're talking about now will be lost in legal fees over a battle that could last who knows how long. Is this perfect? No. Is anything perfect? No. Was Winter Miles, when I sat up here and we approved that purchase, was that perfect? No. They were talking about making that into a, 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 a harness training facility. Or, no, what was it? A, a question, question facility, facility yeah. Right. That we had no plan for, no money for, no anything for. But we went forward with the purchase because we wanted to preserve the land. And at the end of the day, we turned it into a park. Then at the end of the day, we bought 200 more acres up and down Lockwood. And now we own or control, not, not we, excuse me, the city controls all of Lockwood, the whole entire thing after Waverly Woods. So, you know, you, you can sit here and want everything in a neat little pile and a neat little folder you know, with all your I's and T's dotted and crossed, but we got it to this point with our I's and T's dotted and crossed, and now we have to go on to the next step. Nobody on this council has guaranteed anybody that this can operate as a golf course forever and ever. Not once was that said. When we had everybody down here, when was that, guys? June, July, whenever it was. Uh, we told everyone, guys, the only guarantee you have is that this is public land. I mean, you know, if we wanted to shut down the golf course and we wanted to make it into biking, hiking trails, um, put a cemetery out there. Uh, what, <laughs> that's why I threw it out there for you. Any council can do that at a later date. If it stays this amenity and we're able to improve this amenity and we're able to get strategic partners involved who aren't involved right now because, quite frankly, in meeting with them, they want to see that we're committed. They're not going to do anything until they know that the, the city is committed because the last time they went forward uh, with a commitment with the golf course, 
they ended up putting a lot of money into the golf course and then got nothing in return. So, you know, they have not come forward with anything. They don't have any plans at this time. But what they have told us is prove it. Prove your concept to us. And maybe we'll talk. We have to get the course up to a level six, seven, is six, that what they seven. said? For them to even consider it. And right now it's a, it's a three or something. What is it, three, four? Uh, <laughs> okay. Well. And it takes about $2 million to get it there is the number I've heard batted around. There's all sorts of money being batted around. We don't know yet. We'll know once we get the management company in there. And this council has committed long before you were here that we're not spending anywhere near the amount of money that uh, some in an association may want us to to make it into a golf course. It's going to run on its own. It's going to be an enterprise fund. If it can survive after we seed it a little bit up front, great. If not, shut it down. Make it a park. Think the driving range would be an incredible gun range. Think of it. But you know what? They'd I mean? love that. Well, I don't know if it's <laughs> to an urban point. Right? You know, you get my point. It could yes. be it could be anything. It, 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 it's three hundred acres of preserved land. You, you don't get these opportunities. There, there are cities all over the place. When 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 you go down to Florida League of Cities, when you when you go out and you mingle with your uh, commissioners of other cities, and you you ask them, you know, how much parkland do you have? Oh, you know, we got 80 acres, we got 50 acres, we got 70 acres. We have 750 now. If this goes through, that's a lot of land. And then on top of that land, the conservation areas that we have throughout the city, there's about 2,200 acres preserved. So we're doing a pretty good job. I, I, I realize it's not as neat as you want it to be, but sometimes you just got to go with it. See where it leads you. I'm just glad that all, I feel like it's a much more transparent vote now that it's all out there. It so. was all out there three months ago. You just weren't here for it. We just, we quite. Anyway, Honestly, I don't think it was it was stated from here. So it was all behind the scenes, and people who wanted to seek out the information could get it, but you couldn't find it all in one neat, tidy place. I feel like this meeting now, it's all in one neat, tidy place. Council member, I am going to respectfully disagree with you. We had this discussion, even how much the fee was. Anybody disagree with me on that? No. You just weren't here. I was here. I was here. Yeah, I was here, and I paid attention, and I just disagreed all along the way with this particular method of accomplishing the goal. So it's up. Bobby, I stand corrected. It's Rapid City was the flood. Look it up. You can look it up on Google. You'll see all those golf courses that are there now. All right. Great use of a floodplain. Thanks, Bobby. Anybody have anything else? Hearing none, we have a motion on the table to adopt Resolution 3351-17. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Could I ask Rose? one question? Because I think I want to say no on this and yes on the next one so I get it right. I think we should buy the golf course via a different means. Is the appropriate vote no on this? It doesn't matter because it's four, so I'm going to say no. You, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. you do realize that we were discussing a different means of buying the golf course, but it just wasn't the means that... The majority of the council was comfortable with. Yes. And, and I do know that staff had recommended that this go to a referendum in March, and council didn't go with that. That would have been like the A-plus gold star solution. No, it, just, it just didn't happen. <laughs> there were members of this council who weren't comfortable with that. So okay. you move on. And you know what? We almost got a development uh, submitted then. But because of staff and meetings that we had, we were able to put them off. It, the, the, there's no pushing Mr. Barton off anymore. I, I can wholeheartedly assure you that we have played every card we have. And <clears throat> Mr. Groot, would you disagree with that? I'm no, sure. No. But Tucker, is he just chomping at the bit for us to make a wrong step here? Let me say more generally. I think attorneys would much rather litigate than, inter than, the, than draft a contract. So, <laughs> When you sit at the table with them, and you sit across from them, <coughs> the inflections are different. Okay. You Mr. know what you know what they're they're wanting to do. Mr. Anyway. Mayor, is the, is the vote over? <laughs> I'm, call, I, I'm going to recall the vote because it got confused. All in favor of the motion to adopt Resolution 3351-17, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Nay. Four to one. Thank you. Motion passes.
Moving along, first reading of ordinance, uh, we have none. Moving on to resolutions, we're up to number 19, <coughs> which is the amendment to site development order number 456-16 for the strand at Oviedo on the park. And just let me catch up, Mr. Cobb. Okay. I believe this gets turned over to you. Yes, it does. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for City Council to approve an amendment to site development order number 456-16, the strand to... Uh, and this is a, a revision to the parking lot in the rear of the building. The Strand 2 is located on the east side of City Plaza Way and north and the south side of uh, uh, Center Lake Lane and then also the north side, or south side of Center Lake Lane and the north side of Mike Roberto Way. Uh, tonight you are acting in your role as land use administrator for developments within a vehicle on the park. The, uh, the project is a mixed-use development of 15,058 square feet of retail and 32 apartment units. The idea behind the revision is to segregate the parking lot into what we would call residential and commercial spaces. The developer is proposing to, and you can see up here on the, the screens, that they're proposing to install gates. And what this is requiring them to do is that part on one side of the gate would be residential parking then on the other side and on the south side of the gate is going to be commercial parking. It required them to shift uh, some landscape islands southward, three spaces. And what it, what it did was it, um, our code says 10 spaces landscape island, 10 spaces landscape island. In this one instance you have 13 spaces and so there's a deviation involved which is why it's being brought before the council as the land use administrators. Uh, the staff has reviewed the plans, staff recommends approval and so it's recommended that the council adopt resolution number 3347-17. Thank you Mr. Cobb. I know the applicant's present. Do you have anything to add? Are you available for questions? Uh, I have no request to speak forms. Is there anybody who would like to address council on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I'll close public comment. Move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor? Yep. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 3347-17. I'll second it. We have a motion second. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? Nope, I have no issues. Uh, Councilman Pollock? No issues. Councilmember Slidic? We're all good. Councilman Britton? Good. All righty. Hearing no discussion, because obviously Mr. Cobb covered it very well, this is just segregating parking between public and private. Uh, I'm pretty good with it as well, so I'll call the question. Motion on the table is to adopt resolution 3347-17. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Is that five? Nobody opposed, right? Good. Five all. Aye. Motion passes. Sorry, I didn't hear everybody. I probably mumbled. What's that? I said I probably mumbled. Oh, okay. <laughs> no vote is a yay vote. Always remember that. <clears throat> Uh, moving along, we're up to resolution number 3349-17, approving the stormwater revenue sufficiency analysis. <coughs> Mr. Cobb. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request for Council to approve a stormwater sufficiency analysis prepared by the City's consultant, World Land Financial Services. Uh, the purpose of the analysis was to take a 10-year look at revenues and um, and uh, expenses of in the city's stormwater utility and to forecast uh, and, and to look at operations, to look at debt service, to look at capital program, and also to, to incorporate the uh, purchase of the, uh, of the golf cars. Uh, it's, uh, it looks at identifying any re the identified revenues required to maintain the adequate service levels, the adequate, adequate reserve levels, and there's also the debt service requirements that the utility will need over the 10-year forecast period. Um, World Dan uh, had came forward with three recommendations. The one, the city would find its rate resolution to set a minimum annual indexing of 2%. Um, this is similar to the same type of indexing that we did with the water and sewer accounts. There is an increase to the stormwater fee from $7 per month to $10 per month and uh, that the city also annually uh, update their analysis on projected revenues and uh, expenses. Um, the, um, the resolution does provide for the increase of the stormwater fee from $7 to $10 per month and it also adopts the, uh, the revenue sufficiency analysis. Uh, it's recommended that the council adopt resolution number 3349-17. 
Thank you, Mr. Cobb. I have no request to speak for him. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council at this time? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close public comment and we'll move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Thank resolution 334917. Second. Motion second. Deputy Mayor, anything? No, sir. Councilman Britton? Is, is this the last step? <laughs> I think it's the last one I see on the agenda. Okay. Um, last first I'm step. just doing some math here. It's not uh, much of an increase, um, but I am sensitive to the fact that it's uh, a resident is usually one ERU, and a business is probably more than one ERU. So I don't necessarily think this is uh, an easy decision, but I think it's a necessary one. Uh, we were going to raise these rates. We've needed to raise these rates for quite a while. Uh, I don't remember when we first set these, Brian. When, when was that, in the 90s? It was with the inception of the uh, of the utility, which I think was sometime in the early 90s. Okay, so, so it's been over 20 years since we've increased these rates. So I think uh, this is an appropriate time to do it. It's going to it's going to provide a good uh, value for our citizens. Great. Anything else? No. Council member, either one. It looks good. Good. I don't like the means to the end on the extra three dollars, but I've already spoken my piece on that. Uh, Mr. Cobb, uh, just help me out, or, or Bobby, whoever would like to answer this. Um, the three dollar increase is not solely just for the golf course, correct? No, sir. This, uh, as the sufficiency analysis looked at the entire operation of the stormwater utility, so it looks at the operations. It, it took into account the capital program, took into account the reserves, it, the whole in the whole utility. And so that was one of the things. We were going to need some form of an increase to maintain these, um, 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 I'm trying, I can't think of it, to keep the utility going, uh, to keep it operating in the black so that it wouldn't operate in the red. And so uh, that was going, there was going to be some form of an increase needed anyway. But uh, we were able to, like I said, we were able to put the, uh, the golf course in there as well as far as the purchase. And we were able to come up with uh, what I would think a minimal minimal increase to accommodate that. Right, 64 percent of the increase, if I remember, is towards the golf course, uh, be, towards the public lands, and uh, the balance, 36 percent, is going into the capital right. improvement fund, which will fund projects that we've been putting off. Right, correct? and you still have the seven dollar, the initial seven dollar right. fee still there. So I mean, it's still. You know, part of all that, so. but right, it will help us out as far as getting our capital program done as well. Getting capital program back on track. Yes, sir. And it was going to go defund. It was going to be upside down. And what was it? Two years? Just yes, so everybody who may be listening at home knows that, like, it, it had to be raised. Yeah. That, that we had no choice. That, and, and like Ms. Uh, Council Member Britton brought up, I mean, this was something staff's been discussing with us for two years now. Yes, sir. All right. Anything else? All right. Uh, motion on table is to adopt. All in favor of that motion to adopt resolution 3349-17, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I've got to say nay just to make sure that my protest of the golf course means to an end is there. Though I do like that we're buying the golf course. Did you vote yes or no? I voted no on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. All right. Four to one. There we go. Okie dokie. Moving on. <laughs> All righty, moving on. Uh, we're up to item number 21, resolution number 3359-17. Mr. Cobb, why don't you enlighten us here? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request for the City Council to consider an appeal relating to a denial of the Site Development Order Final Engineering Plan an architecture design order for property located on the east side of Lockwood Boulevard and the north side of County Road 419. Um, the Land Development Code states that when there is an appeal of the Land Use Administrator's decision that it shall be taken to the City Council and that the appeal will be timely filed and that uh, the Council may revert, reverse or affirm wholly or partially or may modify the order requirement or decision or determination appealed from 
and shall make any order, requirement, decision, determination that it, in its opinion ought to be made in the case before it. To this end, the City Council shall have the same powers as the Land Use Administrator, which in this case would be the Land Use Administrator, or if it were the local planning agency or the hearing officer. Uh, the subject property totals about 9.63 acres in size. It is assigned the Plan Unit Development Zoning District and it has the low density and conservation future land use designations of the comprehensive plan. The proposed building for the site was approximately 68,000 square feet in size. Uh, the city, on December 21st, 2015, the city received an application for the site development order, uh, final engineering architectural design order, for the property of a proposed use of a charter school. Now, the the staff gender memorandum goes into detail as to how this has proceeded through the course of the review process. This property is located within the uh, what was the River Oaks Reserve Planning and Development. That, that developed PUD expired uh, in June of 2011. Uh, this, during the staff review, the staff determined that the property needed to reestablish its zoning. Land unit development zoning is not like C1 or C2, or it's uh, where you have standard standards listed in the land development code. Plan unit development is negotiated through a development agreement. The development agreement sets forth the minimum requirements, and so the staff uh, the staff recommended that the applicant begin that process, and we were working toward that process of developing a development agreement and a uh, master land use plan for the property. Uh, in, Oct in October of 2016, we the staff received a letter uh, from the applicant requesting that the city uh, hold off on the PUD uh, zoning map amendment uh, application and immediately approve the site development order. Uh, the land use administrator, uh, in review of that, determined that the, uh, there were no standards to apply, and so the land use administrator issued a denial development order relating to the project and uh, denied the request. Uh, the applicant then, in a timely manner, filed the appeal. Uh, it's recommended that the resolution number 3359-17 be approved, affirming the decision of the land use administrator in the action taken in the City of Oviedo denial development order relating to the Lockwood Charter School, project number 15-1194, SDO slash Site Development Order Final Engineering Architectural Design Order, which resolution would constitute a denial development order as required under the provisions of Section 163.033 Florida Statutes relating to the appeal. And uh, Mr. Groot has a few remarks that he would like to give as well. First, I just want to uh, state that uh, what Mr. Cobb said is accurate. That's, that, those are the facts. But narrowed down into its simplest form, uh, when the development agreement expired for the prior PUD, the city could have taken the position that that PUD was gone, gone forever, and, and the land reverted back to whatever it was, low density residential, rural, whatever. But it didn't. It, it said, we're still going to uh, uh, state and affirm that the property is PUD. It just doesn't have a plan associated with it. And a PUD without a plan, without a meaningful plan, is, doesn't, doesn't mean a whole lot. The plans that were associated with the prior PUD were bubble plans. I think that's where they're described very accurately by Dr. Korea in the staff memorandum. Uh, what the city was moving toward with the owner was a master plan to make the skeleton of the PUD have bones and allow for the development. Technical issues arose and for some reason the applicant departed from that process. And so what you have is a, is a request to approve a site development order for a PUD that doesn't have a master plan. It's that simple. You may hear an argument that's, make, that's a lot more complex than that, but that's it in its very essence. Mr. Cobb, do you agree with that? Yes, sir. So that's where we're at and uh, you may proceed from here unless you have any questions of us. Thank you, Mr. Groot. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Groot before I move on to the applicant? Before I move on to the applicant, uh, I just got a 
message alert from Orlando Sentinel and uh, Chief, it seems that the murder suspect was apprehended yep. who killed the officer down in Orlando. So that's good news. Um, anyway, applicant. Name and address for the record, please. Robert Harding on behalf of the applicant. I'm the attorney for the applicant. I'm at 301 East Pine Street, Suite 1400, Orlando, Florida. My phone number is 407 843 8880. I heard earlier today from the commissioner the clear standards. You can't make up rules as you go along. It should be in your code. You should have a set of rules that all people follow. This firm represents both the applicant for the development of Lockwood Charter School, Summit Construction, and the owner of the property associated with it, Red Apple at uh, Lockwood. Um, the description by city manager and the city attorney sounds very simple, but that's certainly not how we see it happen. Uh, it occurred over the last year. Uh, we're making a final plea for reason and fairness to prevail in hopes that uh, we can avoid costly litigation. As you know, our client is seeking to construct a charter school on 9.62 uh, acres of properly zoned, consistent with the comp plan property which a school is specifically identified as a permitted use. Remember, Florida Statutes 1002.3318A states, quote, a local governing authority must treat charter schools equitably in comparison to similar requirements, restrictions, site planning processes imposed upon public schools that are not charter schools. In reliance on those entitlements of record for this property, our client purchased the property. For over a year, the city, through its staff, has engaged in a purposeful scheme to prevent the development of a charter school as part of a previously approved River Oaks Plan unit development. As a result of the city's intentional delays, our client is now under serious time constraints to build start school construction. Should we not have this matter resolved so that construction can start in late February or March 2017, the charter certificate, which was issued to our client, will expire and damages literally in the millions will be caused as a result. Some history on this one needs to be talked about because it is certainly not as we believe the city manager and the city attorney described. In 2001, this city approved the River Oaks Preserve Plan Unit Development Conceptual Development Plan, the CDP. It accounted for all 105.9 acres located within the River Oaks Reserve. The CDP was approved uh, subject to the River Oaks Reserve Developers Agreement, which was also approved in 2001. It's a developers agreement. In other words, the CDP approval was explicitly conditioned upon compliance with the developers agreement. The property owned by our client, which is subject to the current dispute, makes up 9.63 acres of the overall 105-acre project that was designated as the commercial track. Phase one, the commercial portion, was addressed as 6 6B in the developer's agreement. There were 15 acres originally commercial. It was divided up into four lots, lot one, two, three, and four. It explicitly said in the developer's agreement that it provides for institutional uses, including schools. They can be located on the commercial uh, track. In any event, the school uses are permitted under this zoning. In 2002, this is where you have to be clear. In 2002, the city approved a preliminary development plan for phase one, and it authorized the applicant to commence with the activity specified within the application. That's the phase one PDP. The phase one PDP covered the entire commercial track and all the commercially designated property in the PUD, including our site. The phase one PDP explicitly provided for development under the PDP shall comply with the developer's agreement the PUD and the CDP. Phase one was the last step of the development prior to obtaining a site development order, final engineering plans, architectural design order, other than pulling the final building permits. So the site plan approved as part of phase one included the four lots, commercial lot one, two, three, and four. On or around 2008, construction and the build out started on lots one, two, and three, and they were completed under the CDP, the developer's agreement, and the phase one. In order to construct these three lots, the developer, our predecessor, did not have to submit to a new PUD application, did not have to submit to a new CDP, did not have to undergo a rezoning, 
did not have to submit for a new developer's agreement. To the contrary, the developer was allowed and able to submit a final site plan along with final engineering and architectural review plans. And they were approved without incident for development consistent with the approved PUD, CDP, developer's agreement, and phase one. Phase two came along. The city approved the preliminary development plan for phase two. As, development, as with the development for lots one, two, and three of the commercial part, the developer was able to develop phase two without being forced to submit to a new PUD application, submit to a new CDP, undergo a rezoning, and submit a new developer's agreement. To the contrary, the developer was able to submit a final site plan along with final engineering and architectural review plans which were approved without incident for the development consistent with the previously approved PUD CDP developer's agreement. In 2012, after the initial expiration but negotiated by the developer, a vested rights certificate was negotiated and obtained. Vested rights certificate. It granted the development rights to the final lot. This is the only lot left. So everything in the subdivision was developed. The residential portion and commercial lots one, two, and three were developed. And with the final lot, and only pertaining to the final lot, a vested right certificate was negotiated, obtained, signed by the city and the predecessor in title, and recorded in the public records. City staff's insistence that our clients must start completely from scratch and apply for an entirely new PUD, a new amendment to the zoning map, a new development agreement, not only defies logic, it's patently unfair and discriminatory. No previous developer associated with this project was made to jump through any of these hoops. The entire point of obtaining a certificate of vesting is to ensure the development of Lot 4, the final 9.63 acres of the 105-acre project, that it would it proceed in the same manner and under the same conditions as the rest of the project. Rest of the, project. the tortured logic of city staff to justify imposing these improper procedural hurdles and avoid its commitment under the certificate of vesting is telling. We're confident that any court's going to see that the city's use of this attempt to say, oh, you have a vested rights certificate, you have vested development rights, but you don't really have any rights to go along with them, will not be approved. It just cannot hold up. Just as a, the previous developer, our clients, all we needed was a final site plan order and other necessary standard permits for construction. They did not need to apply for a rezoning amendment. Zoning was already in place. They didn't need to apply for a new PUD. It was already approved and in place. They did not need to apply for a new CDP, which was already approved in place. They did not need to apply for a new PDP. It was already approved and in place. Recall that when the developer applied for and received the certificate of vesting in 2012, the entire project was fully developed, save for 9.63 acres, which is our property. Thus, no other property in the project needed vesting or protection. This wasn't some sort of vague thing where, you know, oh, there might be some property left to, to vest in. This is one specific lot, lot four. The vesting rights agreement that was negotiated and signed only applies to that. Attached to the vesting rights agreement was the CDP and incorporated in the certificate of vesting. The city admits the owner has vested rights in the CDP, although the city maintains those rights are meaningless through this process. The CDP was approved subject to and cannot exist without the developer's agreement. Its approval was explicitly conditioned upon condition, uh, compliance with the developer's agreement. The certificate of vesting also attaches and incorporates the phase one PDP for commercial development, which designates the property as commercial lot four. The phase one PDP is also conditioned upon compliance with the developer's agreement and cannot exist outside the developer's <coughs> agreement. Again, the city admits that the owner has vested rights in Phase 1 PDP. In spite of this vesting, and based upon representations that the city process was ministerial in nature, our client has wasted a year jumping through irrelevant, improper, and unnecessary hoops, <coughs> only to find that we believe they were intentional and improper roadblocks designed to crater any attempt to construct a charter school on properly entitled property. As you have gathered, our clients are frustrated, disappointed, and out of patience. We hope there's still a chance to find common ground and avoid 
lengthy and costly litigation. We urge the city to work with us in order to avoid further disputes. We have this hearing. It presents a good opportunity to reverse the direction, send this back to the staff. Let's do not approve, affirm the decision of the land use administrator, overturn this, send this back. We'd ask you to reconsider your possession. We have a vested rights determination. Vested rights litigation is well fleshed out. It's clear. We can still right this ship. I want to go back to what I said at the beginning and what Commissioner Henkin said. We should have clear standards. We can't just make up rules as we go along. If it's in your code, you have a set of rules that should be followed for everyone. We have a vested rights determination that we obtain under and in accordance with your rules and regulations. It says that we have vested rights for this property. This property is authorized as a permitted use to have a school on this. The charter school has to be treated under Florida statute in the same manner as other public schools. And we're asking to let this thing get developed in accordance with its approved zoning. Thank you. Is there anybody who would like to address counsel on this item? I have no written request. Hearing and seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment portion and move on to the pleasure of counsel. I need a motion. I can't make them, guys. Mr. Mayor? I'm sorry, I was just making notes. I would like to make a motion to approve 33-59-17, affirming the decision of the land use administrator. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion to second. Any discussion? I'd like to. Hang on, folks. Motion to first. I'm going to hold my comments for the time being. Counselor Britton, anything? This is a long dissertation. I didn't follow everything, so I'm not sure how we could go forward tonight anyway without understanding what the counsel, the applicant, actually said. I'll caution everybody that they do have a court reporter here. So I'm hesitant to go forward with anything until we can get some interpretation from our attorney. Well, can I interrupt at that point? And I don't want to say anything else because here's where you are right now. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding. You've seen the evidence in terms of the staff report. You've heard the argument of their counsel. It's your decision now. Unless you, if you come back and start asking questions, you're back in the quasi-judicial process in terms of evidence. Right now, you're a deliberative body and you have the evidence in front of you such as it exists. And that is the basis for you to make a decision or not. Yes or no, guys? Well, it was a long dissertation and what came to mind was an email we got about a year ago asking permission to speak before the county commission. And that was kind of telling that perhaps the applicant didn't know enough about our processes to actually follow any rules we might have. So I'm not sure there's enough blame to go around on both sides, but I'm sure there's an argument to be made in either case. Okay. Anything from my right? The, you know, hearing all the information, I'm inclined right now to send it back to the staff and deny this resolution. I think that we need to have more discussion and rather than just affirm it here and kill it. Council member? I think this boils down to reading the vested rights. I think this boils down to reading the vested rights determination letter. I looked at it. It was scanned backwards, so it took me a while to figure out which order to read it in. But the only way that it makes sense to have such a letter, and it goes through all the reasons why these letters exist and all the rights that they confer, it only makes sense in the context of incorporating the 
by the time this was issued, the vested rights letter, the developer's agreement, I think, had already expired. So that seemed to me to be incorporated by reference. And uh, talk about playing chicken, uh, you know, choosing when to play chicken with somebody who has the potential to win a lawsuit. I don't feel that this is a wise time to, well, we, I don't feel like we have a leg to stand on. I know our, our legal counsel disagrees. Uh, but I just looking at the plain language of that and uh, reading some of the memos that went back and forth, uh, it, it looks like that has to be incorporated by reference. So uh, my, my question, and, and I guess we should not have questions because then we get more... No, no questions. Just, just uh, but I would just put a hypothetical question is in looking uh, I, at the materials. Remember, I would yeah. really just say nothing more. Say nothing more. Okay. Put your conscience. I will vote my conscience. Anything else? Call the vote. All in favor of the motion to adopt resolution 3359.17 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Aye. Motion passes 3 2. Have a great evening. Next item, uh, committee assignments. Committee assignments. Mm -hmm. All righty, so each year, guys, we just uh, reaffirm all the different committees that everybody is appointed to on the council. So if you go to second page of the appointments, you'll see the ones in, that are highlighted that are needing to be filled. Also, we have some that other members have, so let's just uh, start with those. Councilman Britton, are you still comfortable with all your appointments? Uh, for the time being, um, I would encourage uh, Councilmember uh, Sladek and, and Pollock to to maybe get familiar with the Parks and Recreation Committee, the ION Committee. Uh, I can brief you on the CSBG Advisory Board. And, uh, but I'm okay for now. I think it would take some, some transition time uh, to turn those over, so I'll, I'll stick with them. All righty. Then the ones that I have, guys, a lot of those, they, they want the mayor, the Metro Plan, uh, the Chamber, uh, Seminole County Chamber, Envision Seminole Leadership. Uh, UCF Foundation Board, uh, that's for the mayors. Uh, the Public Schools Facility Planning Committee, they did send me an email when the deputy mayor wasn't uh, uh, running for re-election. They asked that I would attend. Um, I did ask the council for permission to do that back in October and November, and then the subsequent meeting for it was canceled. So I've never really attended one. But, I mean, I can certainly take it on because it meets very infrequently, and I mm -hmm. believe, uh, I think Deborah Pierre is our staff member on that one, correct? The public school facilities? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, not just leaves, we have uh, Tri-County League we have to fill, Seminole Community Alliance, the Oviedo Winter Springs Chamber of Commerce, that meets on Tuesdays, by the way, Friends of Lake Jessup, and uh, Metro Plan, Alternative and Public Arts Committee, which is going to kind of sunset. So, Mr. Mayor, yes. So if, every, you don't, if everybody don't mind, I'd like to try to get that Friends of Lake Jessup one, so I can see if we can get that going again. That thing's browner than anything, and I'd like to at least see what I could do there. I donated them a website address a few years ago: blackhammock.org. Hey, call up, call up Robert King. Uh, He's your contact. Does anybody have any objections to count, uh, Deputy Mayor taking on that one? Go be a tree hugger. I love it. <laughs> Go be a tree hugger. Listen to her. A, wa a water lover. I love That's trees. <laughs> Metro <laughs> plan alternative. If I can make a suggestion, uh, Councilman Pollock, that might be perfect for you because they meet right next door to your office building. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, my office building is, is over by the airport, actually. Where are you? You're not uh, downtown? No, I'm not downtown. All right, well, then any of you can have it. I, I, I assume you're at uh, downtown. How, how often are you not able to go? Uh, it happens occasionally. Okay. You know. if, if nobody else can make it, I've got a pretty flexible schedule, so I, I can do that. Anybody have any objections? Perfect. Councilwoman? No, you're it. Right. Right. The, uh, the chamber still meets in the evening time for their, their board, correct? Yeah, they need uh, somebody for their board. They meet, uh, it's Tuesdays <laughs> at uh, 5 30, I believe, when they have their board meetings. That'd be perfect for me. You'd like that one? Yes, please. Okay. And any objections? No, sir. 
They want Tri County. When can you can you just describe when they meet? Tri County meets at like eleven o'clock once a month, and it's, it's once a quarter. Once a quarter. Once a quarter. And it gets rotated amongst all the Tri County League cities. So the meeting can be in Orange County, can mm -hmm. be in Seminole, can be in Osceola. They're all over. Yeah, that's that, that's going to be difficult for my schedule. Council member, you want to? Try to take that one on? I'd rather swap you for the Oviedo Chamber because I can walk there. <laughs> <laughs> this is an afternoon one. That's the tough part. Yeah, I can't do afternoons. So if it's sometime after after 3 o'clock, so the tri county League of Cities is all over the place and in the afternoons? It's a lunch meeting. Yeah. Mr. Cobb, could you get the, uh, or, or Barbara perhaps, can you get the schedule of meetings for tri county and send them out to everybody so we can take a peek at it? Uh, Seminole Community Alliance. Any any takers? What is that? Uh, I'm. You know what? That was Council Member Drago took care of that. I, I don't know. To be honest, I think it is a consortium of the service agencies in Seminole County that provide services to children. I think the the if I remember right, all the different agencies come together and they're. Oh, up at the uh, C uh, CBC. CBC building. That's right. Yes. That's where they used to meet. And so they they all um, they get together. All of the different groups get together along with the local governments, and they discuss different different items that are affecting children. And so it's a coordinated effort, is what it is. And then once a year, I believe they do become. I don't think they meet very often. No, I don't think so. But they do require an elected official. When when do they meet them? At what time? I'm not really sure. I, they, I've never really been received any information on them. I get the Tri County stuff all the time, but uh, I've never really received any information regarding the the, the alliance. Mr. Cobb, rather than just asking for a commitment from uh, one of the new members this evening, could we possibly get a hold of their schedule times along with Tri Cities and send them out to everybody? Mm -hmm. We'll see if there's any takers. <coughs> Last one we have to fill is the Public Arts Committee. That's <coughs> Getting ready to sunset, I think. They don't have too many more meetings, right? A couple of more? <coughs> Two more? Who would like that one? Hi, yeah, I'm I into art. Like that. Yeah, bring, bring on the art. Yeah, you got it. Any, any objections? No. Council Member Slater? No. Public Arts is you. And I think that's all of them. Hey, so what, what's still and empty? Hmm? Are there a couple still not not assigned? Tri City. And What's Seminole not assigned County. is Tri County and Seminole County Alliance. Okay. And staff is going to get us meeting Figure dates, times, so that way uh, mm -hmm. everybody will just be familiar with what it is. Uh, Tom O'Hanlon has okay. served as our Metro Plan Citizens Advisory Committee member for years, and quite frankly, every time I run into Harry Barley down at Metro <coughs> Plan, he begs me to make sure that we reappoint him because evidently. Uh, Mr. O'Hanlon, for all his uh, efforts and energy, uh, does a great job down there, and they enjoy having him. And he's chaired many of the different committees. Uh, so I, you know, I have no objections. Anybody? No. No. Do you that public arts? You can probably go in there in a couple of meetings. We're trying to get a policy from consensus from the mall to bring back to us to bless what we can do in the city at public arts. So that one you can probably knock out in a meeting or two. Yeah, I think. That's good. Uh, yeah, Dep Deputy Mayor Shank. Was he Deputy Mayor? Mm -hmm. I always forget. But anyway. He he was, Mr. Shank was the representative. Yeah, yeah he was close. <clears throat> All righty. I think we have everything. Uh, Mr. Cobb or uh, Bob. Mr. Mayor? Just, yes. Who, uh, just to clarify, who got the public school planning committee? They had asked me to cover that. Okay. So All right. They don't uh, meet that often. And uh, we had a... Um, interesting discussion at mayor's managers uh, about where they're at uh, right now that uh, now that I've been up to speed from mayors and managers I'd like to go in there and see what it's really all about so the whole, the whole uh, discussion seems to be on concurrency and actually how to have it now as opposed to uh, not and who controls the concurrency but it was an interesting discussion this afternoon yes uh, all righty, so Barbara, do you have all that? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Anything from any of the other members? So Bob, who has uh, chamber? I have the chamber. You have chamber, okay. And council member, you have Metro Plan alternate right now. All right. Okay. 
That's a fun one. You always hear that. And arts. And arts. <coughs> and, arts. and arts. Correct. Thank and, you. And then Council Member uh, Hankin, or I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Hankin. Has friends of Lake Jessup. Yes. All right. I've got school planning committee to go see what that's all about. And uh, Council Member Britton is encouraging the What's two that? of you to get more involved in Parks and Rec and ION, oh, so yeah, maybe we can pass along some of that. I, I'm excited about the prospect of ION, but I don't understand it well enough to go solo yet. We can sit down with Brian and, and Chief and Chief and Drew. and Because I can uh, bike there, too. If I can bike to a place, yeah, this, this you, is good. I think you I bike through there anyway. Energy okay. to the group. We need to reinvigorate yeah. and, and take stock of what we've done and then go on, on from there. All right. All right. Okie dokie. So we're done with that one. So up to City Manager's report. Mr. Cobb, that's you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. And um, just have one thing. I'd like to report that uh, Ms. Kelly Jones has accepted the position of Financial and budget, budget Officer for the city. Uh, she's going to be the lead staff on the city's budget, as well as the lead staff on the city's CAFR. And so uh, we're excited for her, and uh, we were able to promote within uh, for that important position. So I wanted to let council know that uh, she has been promoted to budget officer. So, okay. anything else? That's it, Mr. Groot. Anything for us? And it's going to be a great new year, and I have something for each of you to sign uh, before you leave tonight. So if I haven't gotten to you, please don't leave until you sign it. Thank you, Mr. Groot. Which one of my children do you want? At I this point in life, I'll take any of them. To... <laughs> Listen, you had, you have six seven, girls, seven, seven girls. daughters, seven girls. Seven. I, I have one in graduate school. I mean, it would just be number eight. It wouldn't really make much of a difference. Yeah, no, we've thought about that. It doesn't make much difference after the first two. Right. So if I just send you her bills, it's not a problem, right? <laughs> now wait, Keith has a daughter too, nursing school. So you know, it'd just be nine. All right, there you go. We're game. Thank you. I'll call you Papa from now on. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we uh, cut the ribbon on the ceremonial ribbon, let's call it, on the hospital, Oviedo Medical Center, on Thursday evening. I must say it was a <clears throat> monumentous event. I mean, that, that of all the ribbons we've cut in, this, in the city in all the years, I mean, that was probably the uh, most fulfilling. I mean, that has been a 20-year journey or more to get that facility here in the city. And Chief White, you probably remember every twist and turn it, it took uh, before we even flew up for the certificate of need issue back in 2001, I guess that was, when they were still telling us there wasn't a need. So uh, quite a facility. If uh, everybody uh, didn't get out to the, the open house or the ceremonial ribbon cutting um, you know hopefully you won't get admitted to the hospital to see it but you should just walk into the lobby and, and take a look around at the the technology that's there I mean when you obviously when they build something new it's built with all the latest and the greatest and they have it there they also have the, the ability to expand the facility I mean that's the the beauty of the way it was built it's opening up at 64 beds uh, an additional 10 or 12 was it for emergency for right 12 emergency rooms going up to about 20 22 beds mm -hmm. so uh, very impressive the MLK parade uh, and celebration was yesterday drew as always great job I heard it was the largest parade they've had excellent um, this Sunday if anybody's interested leadership Seminole is having a uh, fundraiser the class this year has taken on hope as their project here in the city and Dr. Correa you are part of that class uh, all day long at Rock and Brews if you go and you tell them that you're there for leadership Seminole and Hope they will donate 15 percent of the check to Hope then from 5 until 7 I think it is leadership Seminole will actually be there they're having a party out on the patio where you can buy 50-50 and I guess you, you can have raffle stuff other things to raise money I, I thought I saw in the email would you like to tell us about it? So. I don't know much more. Then I do. Yeah, I, I saw something that said 50-50 uh, uh, drinks and uh, appetizers on the patio with uh, the Leadership Seminole class. Do you have an email you can send us? Uh, uh, that's from, um, uh, I think that was from 5 to 7. Uh, this Sunday. Yeah, that's this Sunday, guys. 
Uh, I'll double check on my, my email. My, uh, my, my broker is also part of your class, and uh, he sent it out to everybody in the office the other day. So it's this Sunday, yeah, 5 to 7 for Leadership Seminole with the 50-50 and a few things. All day long, though, if you eat at the restaurant, if you just tell them you're there for Leadership Seminole, 15% of your bill will uh, go to Hope. So it's a great job that they're doing. Uh, quick question of the council. Well, I got you all together on the State of the City, which we're going to do on March 8th. I know there were some questions on... Uh, the question and answer session afterwards because it does get a little stale. The point was uh, brought up by uh, the deputy mayor and then there was a great idea brought up by council member Sladek. So what I'd just like to expand upon with everybody's permission is I, I talked to uh, Tracy about it already who's going to put together the PowerPoint. She's going to change all the advertising for it to ask the public to submit questions as was suggested and what we'll try to do is wrap the questions into the PowerPoint. So that way, folks who are out there who have a question about what's going on here or there, I mean, it may be answered anyway, but that way we'll just we'll bang them off right in the PowerPoint as we're going along. Uh, questions afterwards, if we get questions after the PowerPoint is completed, then you know we, maybe she can just read those off and we can answer them uh, in some form or fashion. And, you know, if the crowd does want to ask us a couple of questions, we'll just play that by ear. But, you know, rather than making it like we always do with the five schools <laughs> afterwards, you know, we'll make it a little bit more relaxed this time. I'll get up, I'll make the presentation, and then, uh, you know, we can mill about afterwards. That sound like a plan for everybody? Does anybody want to sit up on the stage and answer the questions? No? I don't get to answer them anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> got to be quicker. <laughs> Be quicker. Mr. Mayor, yes. Um, along those lines, can we um, can we bring in uh, somebody? I, I, I know that there's the uh, Oviedo TV and, and some other individuals. That come, okay, that, that'll record it so that it can be posted. Actually, uh, Vivek does that every year for us. Okay. Uh, uh, he's up there. Uh, Vivek will be there. He'll be <laughs> Vivek is going to come out. He records it, and then they uh, put it up on the website for everybody to see. Okay. At a later date. Also, uh, this year, uh, what we are going to try to do is that, you know, the last few years we've talked a lot about the history and what have gotten us here. We're going to abandon that, and we're just going to talk about today and forward. So okay. we're going to shorten it up just a little bit. Uh, Oviedo TV, though, uh, Diana and um, um, okay. the name escaped me, but the, uh, it'll come to me, is going to be there, and uh, they want to do little snippets. Okay. So uh, they might even uh, live feed it out onto Facebook or something. They they got all excited about it when they uh, Christina uh, when Diana and Christina heard about it. So uh, they're going to come and do that. They they also did a little introductory video um, for me for the State of the City. I did at the Chamber uh, this Thursday, and they did that on very short notice. Uh, Councilmember Sladek was there. She got to see it. They are actually revamping the whole thing. They're going, to, they're going to get it even faster paced and more action in it. And uh, uh, for those of you who didn't see it, I won't ruin it. I'll let you see it uh, uh, at the State of the City. So uh, that's my report. Who's up next? It is Bob, you're up. Well, my, my uh, first ribbon cutting was uh, quite the doozy. I, I was up there. I, I didn't know what to do. I kind of had the deer in the headlights look. <laughs> no, your picture was awesome. You didn't look down at the ribbon. That was a good job. <laughs> I am going to bring the picture in for everybody to see, because we all the new, the new members, of us cutting the ribbon for the gymnasium and the aquatic center. There, every one of us were looking down at the ribbon, except Drew. There was Drew. <laughs> <laughs> every one of us, you got the top of our heads. So uh, it was quite comical. You did great. And I enjoyed the, uh, the Martin Luther King event uh, yesterday. That was, that was a great event. Um, also, uh, I just I just wanted to uh, uh, thank the chief. Um, I brought um, a Cub Scout den of nine-year-olds to the police station for a tour, and um, I'm bad with with pronouncing names. Uh, Sergeant D. Dave, okay, excuse me, the Panasis and Officer Cap Capitillo, and Duke. Uh, showed up and uh, Duke, Duke, Duke's not Duke friendly. <laughs> oh, Duke's friendly? Well, they, there was a safe distance to Duke. There was a safe distance, but uh, 
Uh, but it was a, it was a great tour. It's not failing. <laughs> no. But, but uh, it was a great tour. They they, they gave a great tour and uh, and put up with uh, all the nine year olds as well. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Anything else? That's it. No. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you're up. Um, I just echo with the hospital. That was a great day. That was without question the, you know, the most. We do lots of important things. Staff does important things. That was probably the most important thing. You know, I always tell people, they, what do you like so much about it is we've just ensured now that our residents get medical help in the fastest way possible. No more rides to Winter Park and places when you're having that. It's a long ride when you don't feel good. Not that those facilities aren't great and have done a great job, but it's nice to have that. So that was good. Um, just in generalities, I just want to, some of the comments that were presented here, I just want to say we have one awesome staff. Um, some of the caricatures of you tonight, we all know not to be real. That's why I didn't choose to take them on, just be done and go. Um, you guys all do an amazing job. I, I would put my highest trust and faith I'd leave my kids with any one of you. Not that I, I would actually like to leave my kids with you. That'd be good. Uh, <laughs> Lonnie doesn't have any boys. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go. You're up to 11 now, Lonnie. Um, what the hell? But uh, you guys do an amazing job, and we all see it. We recognize it. So just disregard what you heard tonight. Go home and sleep well. We, we, we do fine. So other than that, everything else is good. Excellent. Uh, Council Member Thank you to everybody on staff for answering all my oodles of questions. For, for all that you guys got to hear, you have no idea what staff went through getting ready for this meeting. So. Oh, no, we can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, though, I want to make sure everybody knows I like the golf course. Well, so well, the receiving end of that at one oh, time. I know, I know. Now, now I can't talk to you until we get up here. So uh, it's good. But y'all good. Y'all give me some good feedback, and I, I appreciate all, all the good into that. like six months, it gets a lot easier. You, know? <laughs> you figure it out, and you get your, your way, so you're all good. Yeah, but that, that's it. Just want to say thank you. Uh, Keith? Okay. Three quickies, because uh, I know it's getting late. We didn't do too bad for considering the size of the agenda. No. Yeah. Uh, first off, I did attend a Calmo meeting, the first one of the year, uh, earlier this month, and it was at Altamont Springs. What was the dinner? Uh, I had a leave, but I think they had Olive Garden. Oh, okay. But um, they gave a presentation on their uh, reclaimed water program, in which they, uh, hold it, do I have your attention? What are you talking about, Doug? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, We're talking about how great it is. Yeah. I used to go to Calvo just to eat the food. Yeah. Well, they always give you food. But anyway, to get on the point, otherwise we'll be here all day. Uh, they, uh, Altamont presented their reclaimed water program in which they have provided reclaimed water to every household in the city as well as every household in the city of Apopka. So I took that as a kind of a challenge for us to, to try to... Uh, come up and expand our system and make it available in the widest uh, way possible, Bobby. So if we can start you, looking at that. Did you see the presentation? Because we, we had saw it like at Mayor's Managers or somewhere once. Where did we see that presentation? Frank was. Yeah, it was one of their public. They're, they're expanding guys. the ponds to capture the runoff from I-4. From I-4. And mm -hmm. then that's the extra water that they're going to have. Send to that a That pipe into a pocket. Yeah. Because that's what Crane's Roost is. Crane's yeah. Roost is. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, That's where they get all their reclaim from. Uh, let's not be envious, but let's try to try to be uh, at least respectable in that regard. Uh, second item is an issue that was brought to my attention over the holidays, and it regards the apartments at Oviedo in the Park. Um, I know we passed an ordinance or enforced an ordinance an ordinance on three-hour parking. However, there's a conflict because some of the uh, people who live in the apartments have uh, kids that are in college and when they came home for the holidays they had no place to park overnight and unless they were on the lease and the apartment complex uh, was going to charge them like two hundred dollars they haven't put on the lease to come home for two weeks during christmas so if there's a way we can work something out there chief i don't know what if there's a off-site parking they can they can park overnight or something to, to accommodate that that'd be a, a nice thing for us to try to do uh, last item was League of Cities. I attended the uh, League of Cities uh, uh, committee meetings, uh, I guess it was December 8th. Um, for the newbies, uh, I'm on the Transportation and Intergovernment uh, uh, 
policy committee for League of Cities. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's it's a uh, it's a good organization. It gives you kind of a up and out look at what goes on in the state regarding municipalities, some of the issues that are common to us, and some of the the uh, conflicts we have with our brethren at the state and county levels. So it's it's about home rule, um, and I it's would, I would encourage you guys this year to attend. Right here in Orlando. Yeah, the conference this year is in Orlando. You can get oriented to that, and, and then and go to the committee meetings. Find one that interests you, and you can sit and listen and watch. And yeah. I, I don't mean to interject, yeah. but I mean after all the years of going, and we <coughs> when he was, you weren't you the chairman of one one time? I was a chairman for two years of that. Yeah, we, we used to just go in because he was the chairman, just to make him feel <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable. But uh, it's it's amazing what you learn and uh, what what. what a lot of what you see is that no matter the size of the city, no matter the location of the city, we all have a lot of common common issues. Yeah. And some some cities have figured out how to work around them, and you know others learn. So. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I had. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Chief, thanks for the good. Uh, both chiefs, thanks for all the hard work this year. Um, good news uh, that popped up on my uh, text, and I guess the the uh, the mayor got the the word about the capture of the criminal. I just saw it. it came so, up and, uh, my regards to the rest of the My phone started the buzzer in the meeting. So, let's have a good year. Yeah. And also, at uh, League of Cities, they do a, uh, a newly elected orientation. That's uh, emo. Yeah, it, 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 well, yeah, they do the emo class uh, one and two that you do now. And at the conference themselves, there's a two or three hour class. That you can go to, and it's just new member orientation tells you all about the league. It, uh, it really is. Well, you know, it tells you about how to be a city council person. Right? Yeah, that's different. That's pretty when good. I, I remember when I went to Emo, 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 whatever it was called. They used to do it at Florida Week. It was oh. like four hours. Just uh, two days. Yeah, and now it's exactly now you turn it into a program. Um, you can also do your ethics class while you're there at uh, Florida Week. So, Mr. Cobb and I make a. Uh, a point of doing that each year on Thursday morning. Uh, anyway, future meeting dates, we have Monday, February 6th. We have a CRA meeting at 5, and we have a regular session at 6.30. And then on Monday, February 20th, uh, regular session at 6.30. Uh, before I adjourn, is there anything else for the good of the order? Uh, yes, Mayor, I have one thing. Uh, this Saturday, uh, the annual Cops and Cars oh, about that. Uh, will be uh, at the mall from mm -hmm. 9 to 4. So just wanted to four. report that. Little League opening day, too, is February 25th. 20... 25th, yeah. 5th? 6th? 25th. Yeah, last Saturday of February. So For the newbies, you, get, uh, you know to order your ribs and... If you want ribs and pork, pork butt, you got to order them. Well, no, Megan's not going to want that. Bob, if you want ribs and pork butt, <laughs> <laughs> then she's good. Uh, you got to order them ahead of time. Right. Just let Todd uh, Cluxton know. All righty, so did future meeting dates. Anything else? Meeting adjourned.